What's up, friends? Welcome to The Beautiful Mess, where we discuss tools and tactics to improve your life. Speaking of improving your life, I have a very special guest with me, none other than Nicholas Carlton Chamberlain of NCC Audio. He's all about podcasting. Uh, he's done music production, you name it. This man is... What What did you major in college? Was it... It was music product Or music? Yeah. Sound recording technology. I... Well, I originally started off as a percussion performance major, but then halfway through the program, they're training me to be either a band director or playing the symphony orchestra. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then at Texas State, they have a sound recording technology program. And then I got into that and I switched over and started learning how to become an audio engineer. So yeah, big change. Wow, that that's awesome. So what was the, the catalyst to change? Like, did you just realize that you really wanted to get into audio? You love waveforms? Like, what was it about mm. audio that really drew you into that? Well, it was actually, I was on the Texas State uh, marching band, so in the snare line. And I, it was kind of funny. It was a performance, uh, one of the halftime shows. It was Right before that, we were doing practice, and I just could not get the part down. I just could not do it. I don't know why, because I guess maybe I just didn't practice enough, because I had a bunch of stuff going on also at the, my school life. But then after practice, my drum teacher pulled me inside and said, um, we're, you're going to have to sit out this halftime. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is just, it was heartbreaking. I was like, okay. And I started thinking, wait, if I can't even play you know, if I'm getting pulled out to play at a halftime show, how am I going to make this into my profession? I And I was <laughs> too young and dumb to be like, oh, I just need to put more work and effort into that. But then I was started to think about my life. I was like, is this what I want to do every single day of my life? Do I want to be like leading a marching band or a band director? Because I was like, you know what? That's not what I want to do. And I started thinking, well, what do I want to do? Well, I like to play the drums. I still want to do drums. And how can I do that and have a career out of that? And I was, my teacher was like, well, have you thought about the sound recording technology program? And I was like, you know what? I have heard about it, but I heard it was very difficult to get into. I think they only accept like 15 kids a semester. So I was like, well, I, I, I'm not going to be able to to try she's like just try and i was like you know what i was in bands all throughout high school and i've been to recording studios i recorded multiple demos and albums so i did know what it was like to be a musician behind the scenes and long story short i applied and i got in and i learned how to become an, an audio engineer in two and a half years and i'm still learning the, about the craft today that's awesome. That's awesome. And so like you went from the generic audio engineer, because obviously you can do a ton with that. You can do mm -hmm. like radio, you can do music production, you can do um, podcasts. So what led you mm -hmm. from studying audio or yeah, audio production, sound engineering, and then going into yeah. podcasting? Like you seem like you have like a passion behind podcasting. Ah. Oh, Yeah. So after college, I graduated with, and I was a brand new audio engineer, and I was a professional now since I just went through two and a half years in college, and I was ready to go. You, you had the piece be of like paper, the lead engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it turns out it's actually quite difficult to get a job as a new audio engineer in the real world, and so I started off as a an assistant engineer at a recording studio in Houston. And then I was dating my girlfriend who I wanted to then marry to become my wife. And I was like, I need a full-time job. And then it was, I wanted to do something with my Catholic faith. And so I was searching Catholic jobs and there's actually a website called catholicjobs.com. And there was a radio television tab and I clicked it and it said audio engineer for Catholic answers. I was like, what in the world is Catholic answers? So I clicked on it. And uh, it was like audio engineering position and you will be engineering their radio show and editing their podcast and doing all sorts of audio work. And I was like, you know what? I think I could do this. But at this time, I've been applying to like hundreds of jobs like every day. Like it was my full time job to look for a full time job. And then about two months after I applied, 
I just got a phone call with this guy named Darren Delosier. He's like, I'm with Catholic Answers. Are you still interested in the job? And I was like, I totally forgot I even applied no. to this job. I was like, <laughs> yes, I am totally interested. I would love to work there. I was like, and who are you again? And what's this Catholic, Catholic Answers? And then... um. I did some research and I told my dad and my dad's like, what? I listen to Catholic Answers live all the time. And do you know? And and so then I had an interview with Darren and Patrick Coffin, who was the host at the time. <laughs> and my dad was like a huge fan. And during the interview, I remember my dad was like knocking on the door because he wanted to come in and say <laughs> hi to Patrick. I was like, go away. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> and so I... um. But then, like, how did this turn into, like, me wanting to do a podcast yeah, full time? Yeah. So, that's amazing, first uh, of all, like, that you went from, yeah. like, having no idea what this company was about, and you just decided to apply. Like, and you, you've you never done radio work before, and you were just like, I'm mm-hmm. going to just do this. Like, what what gave you, I guess, the audacity even, like, to, to like, have that confidence mm-hmm. to say, like, I can do this. Like, I've never done radio work, and I'm just going to Nike. Yeah, so I, I just been applying to a bunch of different things. So I was just like, I have a lot of the qualifications were checked off. Yeah. But then I was like, I don't know anything about radio automation software. But I was like, I can, I can learn. I think I can figure it out. And then Martha, she was like, just do it. I was like, okay, fine. I applied and they flew me out there after a two-hour Skype interview. At, then we toured the whole Catholic Answers. And at the end of the day, they offered me the job. And then I just drove myself, well, my parents drove me with the, with the U-Haul from Texas all the way to San Diego. And then I was just out there for the past seven years. So September 2014 to April 21st, I was their audio engineer. Wow. And I learned a lot. That's where I actually learned how to become an audio engineer and I figured out everything about okay okay you know preamps <laughs> post-production pre-production okay yeah that, that's <laughs> What's that's uh, amazing like I, I think it's so true that like what you learn in school is like it's important it's good but like mm-hmm. until you actually get to apply it and get that hands-on experience that's i think where the real learning kind of like kicks in and that that sounds like what's happened to you right i mean yeah exactly like i finally figured out signal flow that was like the most important thing yep. i was like oh the microphone goes into the preamp and then the preamp goes into the digital audio workstation or into the into the audio interface and then now i was like oh i understand it now because we are learning like how do audio interfaces work like well, and what's the point of them but we i don't know yeah long story yeah, yeah. <laughs> short. that's awesome but um but then Pretty much the, se- the second year at Catholic Cancers, I got married and then my wife and I had a honeymoon baby and then we had a baby nine months later and we are in a small apartment in El Cajon, California and it was, we had to get out of there. It just wasn't safe for our family. But San Diego is very expensive, so I needed some additional income. So that's when I started thinking about all the different ways of how I could generate revenue, additional revenue. And then I was like, I can do all things audio. So (laughs) I was trying to help musicians with their demo recordings. I was helping some videographers make their videos sound better. And I started helping some people with their podcast productions. And so everything from mixing and mastering music to helping people with podcasting. So you, but then you did the spectrum. uh Like, so you, you kind of like tried everything out. And then all of a sudden, how did you like pinpoint podcasting as like the go to? Yeah. So I started listening to the Six Figure Home Studio podcast, which is now the Six Figure Creative. I started reading business books, listening to more business podcasts, and they're all about like niching down. I was like, what does it mean to niche down? I didn't understand the concept. So after a year and a half of like trying to do all these different things, it finally clicked. I was like, oh, I need to pick one thing that I can get really good at and specialize in and just hone all my skills and just become like the best at it and to have all of the systems and procedures just in place. 
And you can't really do that if you're d- mixing music on one client and then all of a sudden I'm producing a podcast here, then I'm going to be setting up a new re-recording session for this video. And it just, it didn't work out. And I also picked podcasting because I could do that late at night after my family and kids went to bed. I could wear headphones. I didn't have to have the music blasting. I didn't have to bring in musicians into my house. And it was just a skill set that I developed um, at Catholic Answers. And I've just been, you know, I developed the skills and I got really quick at it. And I was like, you know, what? I know how to do this. And so back back in, no, so January 2020, I niched down to podcast production only. And I've been learning more and more about about it since then. That That's awesome. So like. I'm super intrigued by podcasting. Obviously, I, I just started a podcast in October, mm-hmm. so I've, I've been learning a lot as I go along. Actually, I think it was you that kind of helped uh, give me some ideas on how to create a niche and kind of like mm-hmm. think about the first few episodes and uh, what it takes. But I guess, first of all, like why should someone consider podcasting? Why is it like this I guess, art form or uh, form Mm -hmm. of production, like so important when you have things like YouTube, you've got all these different options, especially like, you know, video seems all the rage, but how come Mm -hmm. audio is now like, I I feel like it's, it's growing in importance. Like, have you seen something like that Mm -hmm. in your, your experience? Yeah. I'm just like so many little like rabbit holes we could go down to discuss this. Um, I think if you're going to be a content creator, you have to understand what your audience really likes. Do like, do they have time to sit and watch YouTube videos or is it, are they going, do they need to listen to your content while they're driving to and from work? But like, that's the best thing about podcasting is uh, for the, when the people are listening, they have their headphones on. So they're intimately listening to your voice while they can do other activities, you know? So usually when people are on a walk and they're just like, all right, well now I'm getting kind of bored of my thoughts. What else can I do? And so they pop in music or a podcast. And so you can also listen to podcasts while doing laundry, which I do all the time because folding gets so boring and we don't really watch (laughs) too much TV in our house. So I I stick to either music or podcasting. So you can do a bunch of different stuff while you're listening to a podcast. And right now, I guess for me, it's like I'm trying to learn as much as I can. So I'm just constantly listening to like podcasts and audiobooks. And so that's a great format. What, what do you think is like the main reason why people listen to podcasts? I mean, I, I, I resonate with uh, your like okay. doing chores. Like I, like I do that too. It's like I'm doing the dishes. Might as well listen to something. Uh, and then yeah. like while I'm driving, commuting, like podcasts have been my companion sometimes like on that journey, either that or audiobooks. But like, yeah, um, yeah. if you wouldn't mind diving a little bit into so, that. So people are going to listen to podcasts to be to be educated, to be informed, and to be entertained. So if you're listening, think about all the podcasts you listen to. It's like, why am I listening to this? Well, a lot of the times, am I going to be listening to a true crime story? Am I going to be entertained? Am I going to be listening to all these different people who were didn't know they were in a cult, but they were in a cult, so <laughs> they can tell the story behind it, and you can really get deep into the details of the story and like really imagine that you're there. It's kind of like a really intense, like, so you don't have to read words, but you're listening to the words and you're like forming the story in your imagination. Or you could be using it for educational purposes. So right now I'm doing that for myself. So I've been listening to a bunch of different business podcasts and started listening to some <laughs> crypto web 3.0 podcast because I was like, I got to figure out what the heck that's about. And just to be informed on what's going on. So if you want to listen to your news podcast. So I think those are like the three main things or reasons why people are probably listening to podcasts. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Especially like listening for things that are up and coming like cryptocurrency. I feel like there's not going to be any great books right now on cryptocurrency. And even yeah. if there are, they're like probably outdated the minute they're published. So, um, I mean, things like <laughs> NFTs and what whatnot, like it's, it's crazy how these, you know, especially in technology, I think podcasting is probably one of your best friends. Uh, because of how quickly technology changes. Like if you, I, I always think it's funny when mm-hmm. you go to like the bookstore and you have like 
you know, Microsoft Word for Dummies, you know, th- those kind of books that are just like, they're great. And like, maybe they'll give you the foundational knowledge, but like this software, this technology is going to be outdated in, in a little mm-hmm. bit. And so I, th- I definitely think that's um, uh, a great it, tool. I think, yeah, I think another reason like why, well, when it comes to podcasting, you can really dive deep into a subject and learn a lot from the person talking a lot of times when you're watching youtube videos you're just trying to learn like one thing or a couple of things and you're just it's well i guess everyone does it different but i use youtube as kind of like a google search like every time we need to figure out how to do something it's like okay so how do i split the clips in premiere because i'm not a video editor so i need to learn how to do this thing in premiere so i type in very specific words in YouTube and I get my specific answer. Um, But then with podcasting, if I want to learn about crypto, let's just say, I guess that's an example. If I'm listening to podcasting, I'm listening to two people have a conversation about it and I'm getting like multiple viewpoints and I'm kind of diving deep into it. And when I do have a specific question about it, I can go to YouTube. Like, how do I open up my a wallet, you know, so they're not going to talk about that on the podcast, but they talked about certain terms and I'll go to YouTube to learn about how those specific terms, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And and like who would, I guess I'm curious because like, mm-hmm. obviously I decided to create a podcast. I, I think it's interesting to, you know, I, I've been doing YouTube and seeing the growth there. And uh, I've been thinking about, I guess it, going back to what Ryan said in our last episode, like kind of tending my own digital garden, like um, oh, okay, yeah, a yeah. place where someone who's interested in, you know, learning more about what I do or um, maybe learning with me, because obviously like podcasting is, has been a great yes. learning opportunity. Um, like who would be interested in making a podcast? Like, because I'm sure people think like, uh, oh, I've got to, okay. you know, have fancy equipment. I got to have like a, a built in audience um like who who should be interested in that and like how did they get started i guess okay yeah i guess it really just depends on what (laughs) what you're trying to do i guess for if you have an important message or an important mission some kind of nonprofit, and you want to share it with the world then the podcasting space is going to be great for you if you are a business owner, small business owner, online business owner, then using podcasting is going to be a great way to, you know, for your content marketing. Or if you're any sort of content marketer, you need content out there. Podcasting is going to be one of the best options for you because you can repurpose it in so many different ways. But then also for me and maybe other people out there, I don't consider myself a great communicator. I, uh, I'm not very good at having conversations, especially like one-on-one. So I started one because I wanted to learn how to communicate better. I didn't want to have so much anxiety having a one-on-one conversation with someone. And it really builds up your speaking skills, especially when you go back in editing. You're like, wow, I said, you know, and um, so many times I didn't make sense there. You know, um, I, I feel like those are like the number one fillers that you see like i mean mm-hmm. yeah, i'm sure you know because you edit podcasts a ton but like yeah. <laughs> i go through my yes. podcast and like it's like um you know like like this mm-hmm. it is just yeah all those filler words <laughs> so if you're just looking to increase your communication skills i would start one and it is a great networking tool absolutely so a lot of the times you can start a podcast you know, just talk about whatever you want, just have fun with it. And if you're like 20 to 30 episodes in, you can pretty much go out to anyone and be like, and say, Hey, would you, I would love to interview you. You would be great for my audience. And my audience would love to speak with you. Even if you have like five, 10 people, the person was going to be like, Oh yes, I'd love to come on your podcast. And you can go like talk to people that you may have never been able to talk to. So start a podcast and like a hobby space that you love to do. And then you can just go talk to anyone in that space. So yeah, I mean, that's like a, one that, of the really big benefits about it. That, that's a good way of like looking at it. And uh, this kind of brings me back to the reason why we started this one is like document everything. Like, you know, we just started this mm-hmm. podcast without even a name. Like we were just like having these great conversations, Spencer and I, and then like, we were just like, he's like, we should start a pot. Like, you know, we should document this. We should record it. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's do a podcast. And, um, 
lo and behold, 10, 10, 11 episodes later, here we are. And uh, I would say like, just like you said, the networking and just being able to meet new people. And now like, Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel comfortable asking someone about, hey, like, you know, I would love to talk to you about this or that. Like, maybe they're outside of my circle of influence, but like, I've got a podcast. Would you like to be on it? Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess one question for probably someone starting out might be like what to expect when starting a podcast. So when I started, I had this mindset Mm -hmm. of like uh, YouTube stats. I think I sent you like uh, expecting, I don't know, some ridiculous number of listens per year or per month. And like I I had like the YouTube view mindset. And I think you quickly Mm -hmm. like, well, in podcasting, it's it's quite (laughs) different. Uh, Yeah. So like what what can you expect, I guess, when maybe in the first 10 episodes even or, or just starting out that first year? Yeah, so podcasting doesn't have a really good like search algorithm. And so if you do not have an audience, it's going to be very difficult to build your listenership. And you have to be very consistent with it. And it's not going to be till like after a year before you start to see any progress. Wow. So that's like 52 episodes of weekly or 26 episodes of bi weekly. And if after a year you just see like no sort of like increase. So if you're getting 20 to 30 downloads, you're like, you're doing okay. If you're getting over a hundred downloads, which might sound really low to some people that you're going to be, that you're already above average podcaster. Wow. So those are just some stats. And if you're over, I think, what was it? Like 3000 or 5,000 you're in uh, downloads per episode you're in the top 5% of all podcasts. That's so interesting. It's a diff- different yeah. world, different world. And I think it is something to keep in mind is like, it's almost like a classroom. If you think about it, like if you had a hundred people in your classroom, that's, that's a decent number mm-hmm. of people, even 20 to 30 people in a classroom. That's, that's yeah. a decent number of people to have in your school, so to speak. Uh, and I think maybe having more of that mindset than getting like a hundred thousand views or, you know, yeah. 200,000 views on, on like a, a, the video because uh, I I've seen drastic difference. I mean, we do the video podcast, so you can either watch this on YouTube or Spotify, and you know it's not getting nearly as many views as my normal YouTube channel does. But I figure mm-hmm. you know I'll just put it up there. Maybe someday it'll explode or something, or someone wants to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I figure it doesn't hurt to throw on the camera. Um, yeah. So I think uh, Nick for for our listeners like. If they are interested in more podcasting, obviously you're a podcasting expert. Uh, how can they connect with you? They can connect with me by going to nccaudio.com. So NCC Nicholas Carlton Chamberlain Audio. Yeah, yeah, that's what it stands for. Or you can just go to my email. You can email me, nick at nccaudio.com. Or you go to Instagram, Facebook, look up Nick Chamberlain. I'm Nick Chamberlain on instagram and that's probably the best way i am going to be going through a rebranding here in the next month or so so if you can't find i think i'll have ncc audio up for a while yeah but we'll we'll that's a little teaser of like what's about to happen launching a new company new name that's new exciting branding. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so Nick, we'll, we'll have to have you back on the episode. Thank, thanks so much for being on this episode. Of course. Uh, I think let's have you on one more time and maybe you could explain how to get started for anyone that's interested in diving deeper into podcasting. Um, okay. Maybe like what equipment they need, uh, what it yeah. takes to get started, what's the time commitment, things like that, because I think that would be really interesting for someone that's first starting out with a podcast or maybe they're like toying with the idea, but they're not quite certain. Um, so I think... Let's dive into that. And before we uh, end this episode, I just like to hi- uh, highlight a uh, messy fam comment. So this one's from Stacy. Stacy says, "Given my experience with productivity podcasts, I didn't really expect much here, but boy was I pleasantly surprised! Finally, a podcast that covers all areas of my productivity passion." Uh, This is actually one of the best and most useful podcasts that I have come across. 
and I have been looking for a while for something that is as detailed and just fun to listen to and very helpful and this is it. So thank you guys so much for creating this podcast. I am a follower. Well, thank you so much, Stacy, for being part of the Messy Fam. If you want to be part of the Messy Fam, I encourage you to uh, follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, download, rate, review, all that fun stuff. Um, we'd love to have you in the Messy Fam. Uh, well, thanks so much, Nick. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Until next time, stay messy. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs>